blessing us to be here. Amen. Uh, we're just so grateful that we have enough room in here that everybody can sit six feet apart. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I got up with a hoarse voice this morning, so uh, bear with me. I tried to drink a little tea, and so everything, pray everything works out fine. <clears throat> I want to talk about today the scripture that was read in our hearing, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians 5, 6. <clears throat> Therefore, being always of good courage, knowing that while we are at home in the body, yes, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are of good courage. And I say prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be home with the Lord. Therefore, we are also having our ambition, whether to be at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and each one of us might give account for the deeds done in his body, according that we have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Yes, and so one of these days, we're going to stand in front of the Lord. Yes. And so today, I want to talk about Gate trouble. You get in front of the Lord. I know this may be a, a metaphor, but when you get in front of the Lord, you want to get into the gate. And you're going to have to stand on how you live now and the things you've done. So I'm trying to prevent you today from having any gate trouble that you'll be able to go on in and, and, and be with all the rest of the saints. Because there are some people, you know, they are going to hold things up. So if you have this idea that you see a man's color in his soul, you might have gate trouble. Because right. if you look at what a man looks like on the outside, right. and you judge a man on, on what he looks like on the outside, you might have trouble at the gate. Yeah. Because God doesn't look at the outward appearance, yes, God looks at the soul. Oh, and that's something you and I can't see. But we ought to treat everybody the same way. And I'm trying to prevent me from having gate trouble. And I'm trying to put, pre prevent you from having gate trouble. So we need to look at the soul. And this is what it said in Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. It doesn't matter what your outside looks like. God wants everyone. And if you're walking around with a preconceived notion that one person is better than another person, because of what they look like on the outside, you're going to have some trouble at the gate. Amen. The power of God for salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the group. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I mean, Romans 1 16. For the gospel, I mean, John 3 16. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And so that's what we need to understand. I don't want us to have gate trouble. And Revelation 5, 9, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was, thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people and nation. God wants us all. Amen. And there's people going around looking like what you look like on the outside. This has been happening since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. That people look at the outside and think they're right because of what they look like on the outside and God looks at the heart. And I don't want you to have any gate trouble. Right. You're going to try to go on past the Lord. He's going to say, whoa, 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 where do you think you're going? Mm -hmm. We need to be responsible and realize that we are going to have to stand in front of the Lord one day. One day. And Ephesians 1 verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of time that he might gather together all in all things in Christ. He wants us all in one and one body. That's in Christ. Amen. It doesn't matter what side of the town you live on and, right. and it doesn't matter what what kind of suit you're wearing right. or what kind of designer handbag you have. The only thing that matters is that we're all one in Christ. Amen. Oh, that's the most important thing. Both which is in heaven and which is on earth, even in him, in whom also you have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God wants us all. And it's going to be a wonderful day. But Brother Williams, in Numbers, 
Numbers 12 and verse 1. Let's look at some people who may have gate trouble because they look at the outside and not the inside. And Numbers 12 and verse 1. What does he say there, brother? And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Now, by Ethiopian, that means she came from Africa. And Moses married. And Miriam, his brother and sister, they had a problem with it. They're going to have some gate trouble. Because they were looking at the outside. That man can marry if that's his wife and he wants to, that's who he wants to marry. What happened, brother? For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Right. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Uh huh. Hath he not spoken also by us? Yes. And the Lord heard it. Uh huh. Now the man Moses was very meek. Now they want to say, Well, we're in charge just like you're in charge. But the problem wasn't that who was in charge. The problem was he married that Ethiopian woman. All right. And what I'm saying is they're going to have some gate trouble. And as many people in our society today, they look at what you look at like on the outside, but in the body of Christ, we're all one. Yeah. We don't bring that mess in here. Right, right, because right. we love everybody. Anybody that comes through that door, yeah. we're going to show them the respect that we expect. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can't look at the outside. Brother Wayne, let's give them another example. In Galatians 2, verse 12. In Galatians 2, 12. You know, if you ever had a fair weather friend, you and that friend, you were really close, but let somebody else come in. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the dynamic changes. Mm -hmm. You're not close to that friend like you used to because of that outside person. Mm -hmm. And in Galatians 2, verse 12, what does he say there, brother? For before certain came down from James, uh -huh. he did eat with the Gentiles. Right. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision. Now he was in there eating with the Gentiles and you know they don't have the same dietary uh, things that, we, that the Jews had. He may have been eating pig feet, I don't know. <laughs> but all of a sudden, now when the, when the Jews come, he runs away from his friends. You know, he's, he's going to have some gate trouble. Because I'm trying to tell you, you can't look at the outside of a person and judge them. God looks at the heart. Yeah. And we're supposed to treat people how we want to be treated. Right. And I'm afraid somebody, some of us are going to get in front of the Lord and try to go on into the gate. And I know this is a metaphor. I'm not saying that you're going to have to go through a gate. What I am saying is that we're going to have to stand in front of the Lord whether we've been good or whether we've been bad. Right. What else, brother? And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. Uh -huh. And so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Now, my version say hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. You know what a hypocrite is? Mm -hmm. Somebody that looks like one thing on the outside, mm -hmm. but something totally different on the inside. Mm -hmm. You ever had somebody that ain't real polite to you in your face, and as soon as you turn your back, <laughs> they're running you down like a dog. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is we can't be that way. We have to be the type of people that love everybody. And we don't judge by the outside. Dr. King said the content of your character, not by the color of your skin. And we have to treat people the way we want to be treated. If not, we're going to have some gay trouble. In Galatians 3.26, this is what uh, uh, Paul, when it, as he wrote to the church of Galatia. In Galatians 3.26, for you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus. For as many of you that have been baptized into Christ right. and put on Christ. Listen, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. It's not saying you're no longer a Jew or Gentile, but God sees us all the same. Yeah. There's neither Jew or Gentile. There is neither born or free. There is neither male or female. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Man. That's the attitude we're going to have to have. Man. If we don't have an attitude like that and we're in the body of Christ, we're going to have some big trouble. Yeah. Everything outside of the body of Christ won't get in anyway. Right. <laughs> but the people who act like this inside the body of Christ, you may be incognito. No, nobody may, may never know. God knows how you are. Right. And God knows this little prejudices that we hold on to. We gotta let it go. Right. You might have some gay trouble. In Romans 2, verse 11, there is no respect of a person with God. God's not gonna respect you more than anybody. He respects the people that do what he says they do. Right. It doesn't matter that you're a certain way on the outside. What matters if you are obedient to him. Amen. There's no respect when it comes to God. We all have to do the same thing. Yeah, right. And let me tell you, there's a color that we do see. Amen. And it's red. Amen. And it's the blood of Jesus. Amen. 
That's the color we see. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation 1.5, and from, Je from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. That's the color we see. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Amen. And so if you're going to try to judge somebody for what they look like and not about their soul, you have some gate trouble. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to stop us from, from being stopped at the gate. Now this is just an analogy now. You know, we're all going to stand on our own merit on how we, how we live our life. But I'm trying to stop us from uh, not being able to get in at the gate. Mm -hmm. Another thought is, if you feel you must be affiliated with a certain political party, <laughs> you're going to have some gate trouble. Because really, really. you think that you got to be in this party or that political party. The only way you can go to heaven is unless you're in this party. The only way you're going to go to heaven is unless you're in that party. Right. Glass right. Yes, sir. You know, I don't know Brother Kelly's political affiliation, mm -hmm. but I know Brother Kelly loves the Lord. Yes, sir. I know Brother Kelly's one of the nicest persons I ever met. Yes, I know Brother Kelly loved me. That's enough for me to know. Yes, it has nothing to do with his political affiliation. Yes, God loves everybody. Yes, and if you're walking around and say, well, the only way you're going to be able to make it to heaven, if you're in this party, that you're going to have some trouble at the gate. And I'm trying to get you to go on in. Because there's too many of us in the body of Christ being caught up with this stuff. And so we understand that it's all about God. Because only one person has all authority. Yes. It's not me. It's not you. When you stand in front of the Lord, he's not going to say, well, what was Brother Daniel's opinion on that? <laughs> he's going to say, did you do what I tell you to do? The only thing that matters is God. And you know how many people in the body of Christ are dividing over political issues? Give me a break. All right. We're going to have gay problems. You treat people the way you want to be treated. You do what you need to do as your political thing. But don't bring it in here. Amen. We're not going to have a, a Democratic candidate coming in here and making a speech. Right. We're not going to have a Republican candidate coming in here and making a speech. Amen. You know what we teach in here? The word of God. Because that's what's going to say. The Amen. fact of the matter is, a Democrat can't save me or a Republican. The only thing that can save me is Jesus Christ. Amen. And the problem that we have, and the problem that you have, Amen. and the problem the Democrats and the Republicans have, Amen. is sin. Amen. And they can't legislate that up in Washington, D.C. Right. Right. And if that's all you're standing on, when you stand in front of the Lord, you will have some gay trouble. Right. You're not going to be able to get in there. And I'm trying to stop you today from getting all caught up into this stuff. Amen. And let's just concentrate on the Lord. Amen. You know what? In 1 Peter 2.13, brother. 1 Peter 2.13. What does he say there? 1 Peter 2.13. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man right. for the Lord's sake. Now, the government is placed in order because God placed it in order. And we're supposed to submit to the government. Right. We're supposed to submit to the laws of the land. That's what God would have us to do. Right. But it's not for our sakes. It's for the Lord's sakes. What else, brother? Whether it be to the king as right. supreme, uh -huh. or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doing. Now, the reason we have these Things, systems in order is for the it shouldn't be for the good people, it should be for the evil doers. Right. Now, I'm not saying everybody in, in these organizations treat people right, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying God is the one that placed it into ordinance, right. and it's for the evil doers. Right. And He wants us to submit to it. Yeah. What else, brother? And for the praise of them that do well. Uh huh. For so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence. The ignorance of foolish men. Now who who was it to praise of? It's the praise of God. Right, that's right. What else, brother? As free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. Right. But as the service of God. That's how we act. We act like we're children of God. We act like somebody. Yes. Your, your parents ever tell you you better act like somebody. Yeah, you, know. you be running around in the store, they call you over there, and you don't want to go, brother Daddy. <laughs> when they do that finger like that, and they tell you you better sit down and you better act like somebody. What do you do? You shut up. <laughs> what else, brother? Honor all men. Now let me show you how we need that. We need to show respect to all men. 
We don't need to get on the internet and start running brother, this brother down, and that brother down, and that sister down, because they hold enough, a different political view. We're supposed to honor all men. Yeah. You know who's going to take care of all of this? God. I'm not saying don't vote. You vote, you do. But don't bring that stuff in here. Yeah. You're going to have gate trouble. Because it's all about God. And as a matter of fact, none of that stuff can't save you anyway. The only thing that's going to save you is Jesus Christ. He says, honor some men. All men. All men. What else, brother? No, the brother. Now, we got brothers and sisters all over the place. Right. We don't just love the people, that, the brothers and sisters at Washington Park. We love the brothers and sisters in Carrison. Wherever the brothers and sisters are, we're supposed to love them. Right. We're supposed to show them some respect. We have gospel meetings. We want people to come and worship with us. We need to be able to go and worship with them. We have brothers all over. He said, love the brotherhood. Yeah. What else, brother? Fear God. Uh-huh. Honor the king. Now, you're supposed to honor the king. Well, I don't want to honor him because he's not on my political party. Yeah. Well, I didn't put him in office. It doesn't matter. You're going to have gate trouble. Yeah. Right. Right. What I'm trying to tell you is you can't just go walking past Jesus. Yeah. You got to do what he tells you to do. Right. He said, Honor the king. Brother Wade, I want to know why would he say something like that? Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. You know, we sang a song. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope's not built on, on the democratic society. Right. My hope's not built on the governor. My, hope, my hope's built on Jesus. Right. And if you don't have that hope, you're going to have trouble at the gate. Right. And you're not going to be able to get in. What does he say there, brother? I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplication, mm -hmm. prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. No, no, you read that wrong. Did you say all men? Oh, all men. <laughs> No, no, if I didn't put him in there, <laughs> hey, if I didn't vote for him, I, I'm not praying for him. Yeah. What else does he say, brother? For kings uh -huh. and for all. Uh -huh. the, reason, the reason we vote for the kings and the people in authority is because God told us to. Mm -hmm. But God has a reason that he wants us to pray for them. What's that, brother Williams? That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. God wants us to just have a quiet and peaceful life. We don't want all that crime, crime and, and stuff and people knocking our doors down. And he wants us to be able to live a quiet and peaceful life. Right. That's why we vote for a president that we didn't, I mean, that's why we pray for a president that we didn't necessarily vote for. That's what we have to do. But if you don't, you're going to have some game trouble. Right. Yeah, but I don't like it. I just don't like it. Nobody asked you what you like. Right. You ever told your parents I don't like it? <laughs> What's the, what, what difference does that make? That you don't like it. I know, I know KJ never told us that. I don't like it. <laughs> he wants us to live a quiet and peaceful life. You know why? Because our citizenship is in heaven. That's where our citizenship is. It's in heaven. And in Hebrews 11, and verse 13, brother Williams, Hebrews 11, 13, what does he say there? These all died in faith. Uh huh. Not having received the promise. Right. But having seen them afar off. Right. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Really, what we are is strangers and pilgrims. We can't get all caught up with what's going on in this world. Man. You know, you watch this. Uh, political station, you watch it, you get all caught up and you get all tied up. But what we are, we just passing through here. That's not our home. Yeah. We're trying to make it to heaven. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying do your best and, 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 and vote how you feel like you should, but I'm just saying it's not the end of all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to realize we're just walking right. through here. Mm -hmm. What else, brother? For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Right. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out of, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Right. But now they desire a better country. Wait, wait. Better than the United States? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you talking about, Russia? Mm -hmm. What you talking about, Canada? Yes, sir. What, what country is better than the United States? That's the heavenly one, brother. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to lose your soul. You're going to get caught up at the gate. Over Democrat or Republican, right. you're going to have some trouble at the gate, bro. Amen. Come on.
And we're looking for a better country. Right. You know why? Because we walk by faith, not by, not by sight. Right. You mean to tell me you know Noah built an ark and he never seen rain? Why did he build it? Because God said to build it. You mean to tell me that Abraham goes somewhere God says go and I'll tell you where you're going to go. You just leave your father and mother out. And he just started walking. Why? Because he walked by faith and not by sight. You mean to tell me Sarah think that she could have a child at the age of 90 and she could see why? Because we walk by faith not by sight. You know what else happened? You know Abraham was willing to kill his son. Abraham waited on that boy forever, a hundred years. It was a hundred years before he got a son. And God told him to take him up on Mount Moriah, a uh, mount I'll show you, and take this knife and you slay him. And he, he's ready to slay his son, Abraham, I mean Isaac. And he said, hold our hand. But the reason he was going to do it, because he knew that God could raise him from the dead. There had never been any resurrection before. How did he get this idea? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what we do, brother. You can't move us. You mean to tell me you're going to walk around the walls of Jericho seven times because the walls are supposed to fall down? What kind of military expertise is that? You tell me, God, I just want you to walk around the city seven times and on the seventh day, seven times, and the walls just going to fall down. You know what they do? They're walking around the city. Why? Because we walk by faith. And not by sight. That's what we care about, brother. Amen. And you're going to lose a brother or sister over a Democrat or Republican? Shame on you. Amen. You're going to have trouble at the gate. Amen. And you're going to wish you had it. You mean to tell me somebody said God created something out of nothing? Mm -hmm. He just said, let there be, and it was? Yes. Of course we believe it. Because everything you see here is from what God did. Amen. Because we walk by faith, Amen. not by sight. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, I don't want you to have trouble at the gate. You putting all your your your, your uh, confidence in, in this year, 20, what, this 2020, 24, 2024, uh, forget all of that. You need to put your confidence in Jesus Christ. Right? You don't don't get caught at the gate. You might get stopped at the gate if you think you could get in on by your own your own salvation. How I feel? Oh, I, I could get in. I'll be all right. It's my own salvation. Mm -hmm. Brother Ray, it's in Romans. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Romans 10, 1. You know the Jews thought that they were all right because they were Jewish. You know, we got the law of Moses and we Jewish. What do you mean, Jesus Christ? We don't need Jesus Christ. We got the Ten Commandments. We got the law of Moses. And this is what Paul said to them in Romans 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, all right? is that they might be saved. Now, Paul said, I want you to be saved. That's my heart design prayer. But what, but you know what the next? Uh, oh, go ahead, brother. For I bear them record, uh -huh. they have a zeal of God, but not according to not. What good is a zeal? And you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> a zeal of God. They love God, but not according to knowledge. What happened, brother? They be ignorance of God's righteousness. Uh huh. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And let me tell you about our righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you try to do your own righteousness. If you so righteous, then Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to come and die. Right. Yes, and we walking around trying to tell God what's right. Yeah. And tell everybody else what's right. Like our opinion is the only opinion that matters. Mm -hmm. Like before we get in, go in by Jesus, they're going to say, what did Brother so-and-so say, make sure you have his opinion. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, no, <laughs> what else does he say, brother? For Christ is the end of the law. The reason everything the law was, Christ is the culmination of it. Yes, yes. It was all bringing you to Christ. Right. All right? For, righteous, for, for righteousness to everyone that believes. To how many? Everyone. Everyone, everyone that believes. See, they want to have their own righteousness. They, they, they weren't concerned about what God was saying. They thought they were right. Yes. You mean to tell them, you know what, I'm Jewish. And I follow all the dietary restrictions. And I keep all of those holy days. Right. You mean to tell me I'm not going to, you, you're not that right. <laughs> you're not that righteous. Amen. We all have sin. And come short of the glory of God. Amen. See, they thought that they were impervious mm -hmm. to sin. But, the, but, the, but, but a hint, a clue, we all, hit, we all get hit by sin. Yes. What else, brother? For Moses, 
describe the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. What he's saying is nobody kept it perfect. Right. I'm going to tell you what Moses described. Everybody that lives by can, can everybody that do it can live by it. Yeah. But the problem is, you didn't keep it perfect. Right. That's the problem. You don't even realize that you can't, nobody keeps the law perfect. What else, brother? But the righteousness which is of faith, speaking on this wise. This is what you need. You need the righteousness which is of faith. Yeah. I, 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 you think you're a perfect law, people. But I'm going to tell you what you need. You need the righteousness, which is of faith. Yeah. Okay? Say not, in thine own, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Right. That is to bring Christ down from above. Uh -huh. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. You don't have to go through all of that. You want to be saved? You don't have to go into heavens to get Christ. Yeah. You don't have to go into deep to get Christ. You don't have to go through all of that. What do you have to do, bro? But what says it? Uh huh. The word is not thee, even in thy mouth, uh huh, and in thy heart. Right. That is the word of faith which we preach. All you need is the word. That's right. And the word is near you, and the word is near me, and the word is near us because we preach it. Yes, That's all you have to do. Amen. You don't have to say, "Well, I'm a, I'm a perfect law keeper," because you're not. Mm -hmm. Even the people today who think they're keeping the law, you know, you can't keep the law perfectly. And if you are under that old covenant, you don't have any way of getting your sins remitted. Unless you're running around here trying to slay goats and, 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 and animals to try to, and I still won't do it because the blood of goats cannot take away sins. What you need, and what I need, and what we all need is the blood of Jesus. And don't leave the blood of Jesus. That's what you need, brother. What else, brother? That if thou shalt confess with the mouth uh -huh. the Lord Jesus, right. and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And it's got nothing to do with the law of Moses. But just confessing just doesn't mean confession, it means to do what he tells you to do. But it's unto righteousness. Yes. What else, brother? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, uh -huh. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, they thought they were so right because they were Jewish. Yes, sir. And they were keeping the thought they were keeping the commandments perfect. They were making these animal sacrifices and God, Jesus, Paul is trying to tell them, you out of my house. Nobody keeps the law perfectly. That's right. What you need to do is confess with the mouth and believe in your heart unto righteousness and you shall be saved. Amen. Oh, oh, you can't get in with your own righteousness and, and, and own salvation and Isaiah 64, 6, but we are all as unclean things. Our, all our righteousness is as a filthy rag. You ever put a rag somewhere and you left it and you forgot it and you went back to get that thing that was filthy? That's what, I, that's what we look like trying to govern ourselves and say how we're going to get to heaven. It just was not work. And in Luke 18, verse 11, this man thought he was so righteous. Oh, Luke 18, 11. This Pharisee, he, this Pharisee stood up to pray. And this is what he said, Luke 18, and verse 11. Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Uh -huh. Now he's not praying to God. He's praying with himself. Yeah. Okay. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners. You see how good I am, God? <laughs> I thank you, God, that I can see why around his chest out. <laughs> that I'm not an extortioner. What else, brother? Unjust. Uh -huh. Adulterers. Uh -huh. Or even as this public. You see that fellow over there praying that public? I, I thank you. I'm better than him. <laughs> you see, you see the irony of this stuff. You see the absurdity of it. Because we can't save ourselves. Our righteousness is nothing. What happened, brother? I fast twice in the week. Uh huh. I give tithes of all that I possess. Uh huh. And you know what? He's just giving it to be given. Because his 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 reward is that he won't talk big about himself. You ever see somebody help you? And the reason they're helping you is so they can go and tell everybody they help you. <laughs> They, they're not helping you because you need help and they and they're trying to be sincere. They're helping you so they can go and tell somebody that they help you. Mm -hmm. Somebody give you a, a nice suit and you wear the suit, you walk around in the suit, and the, and the, and the brother said, see that suit he's wearing? I gave it to him. I gave him that suit. Oh, right. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. See, we have to have the right attitude. You can do things for people and if you're doing it with the wrong attitude, you won't get any credit. Right. Because you've already gotten your thanks from me. Amen. Amen. And then uh, 
In Genesis 4, verse 5, you remember Cain? Cain slew his brother Abel. Because Cain didn't want to just do what God He thought he was going to be right. His own, he had his own righteousness. And in Genesis 4, verse 5, but unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And, and God says, well, why is why your countenance fail? If you do what's right, it'll be okay. But it's people walking around thinking that they can be saved however they want to be saved and do whatever they want to do. And God's just going to take Here, God, you take this. Just one word. I'm trying to stop us from having trouble at the gate. If you see a person's color, the more than so than they sold, you will have trouble at the gate. If you walking around saying that you got to be in a certain political party in order to go to heaven, you will have trouble at the gate. And if you're going around saying, I can have my own salvation, I know what God says, but I'm going to do it my own way. Sure enough, you're going to have some trouble at the gate. And I'm trying to tell you, we don't want to have trouble at the gate. If you want to be able to get by Jesus, what you have to do is hear his word, Romans 10, 17. So then faith come by hearing. You ever had somebody tell you something? Your brother Thomas used to tell me, cut that grass. I want that grass cut by, by the time it's dark, right? And I'm out there, dust dark. I heard him, but I didn't hear him. Romans 10, 17, so did faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And then what you have to do is you have to believe what he says. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is. You know why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And then you also must repent. Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, except you repent, shall all likewise perish. We are no better than anybody else. Repentance means a change of mind resulting into a change of action. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And nothing's going to change till you start thinking, start changing, changing how you think. Amen. And you're going to have to confess Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Amen. And you're going to have to be baptized. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. But if you don't do this, you're going to have some trouble Amen. at the gate. Amen. And you're not going to be able to get in. Just walk past Jesus like it's nothing. Amen. You're going to have to do what God tells us to do. Amen. And what we need to do is be obedient to him. And so that's what I want to talk about. Trouble at the gate. Amen. And today, there may be somebody who's, who's been listening and listening and listening and you know, you know what you need to do. You need to be added to the body of Christ. The only thing that's going to save us is Jesus Christ. And let me tell you what Jesus, what he does. He adds the saved to the church. And anything outside of that body is not saved. And everything in the body is saved. If we live in right. Because in the end, Christ is going to come out and take everything that's in that body that's not living right. He's going to take it out. So we're going to have a church without spot, or wrinkle, or blemish. But you need to be in the body of Christ. Amen. Maybe somebody here today know what you need to do. And you know you need to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Don't hold back on that. You don't know what's coming. We got COVID running around here. Right. We got all kind of things happening. People running in cars and, 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 and all kind of things happening. You got to be careful. You don't know what's happening. The time to do it is today. Amen. That's what you need to do. You need to be obedient to the Lord. Yes, and if there's some of us who are Christians who are going around and, 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 and walked off from God, we walked off and thought things were better out there. You know, sin always looks so appealing, doesn't it? Yeah. You remember the, the uh, prodigal went to the far country, looked out there, everything over there looked good. Yeah, Give me my money, Dad. Mm -hmm. I want to go out here and I want to have a fun time. And when his money ran out, guess how many friends he had? No, no. no. He had to come crawling back home to his father. And if you want, if you left God and you want to come back home, he, he's, he's waiting with open arms. Amen. And you know what he said to the prodigal? Put some shoes on his feet. Put a robe on his back. Put a ring on my boy's finger. He said, well, I don't want to be your son again. I just want to be a servant. He's like, shut up, boy. You're my son. Because my son that was dead is alive again. Amen. I'm telling you, God always wants you to come back. Amen. But you got to take the first step. Yeah. If you take one, you'll take two. Please don't walk out of here today. Like, it's just so uncertain in this world, things that are going on in this world. Anything liable to kill you. Amen. And you need to be right with God. Amen. I don't want you to have any trouble at the gate. Please let that be known. As you got to be standing the same song.